The artist Alley gets a little batty. Here's your look at the new DC Collectibles DC artist Alley Joe Ledbetter Batman statue. A skilled and multifaceted creator, Joe Ledbetter, aka J. Led, has experience as an artist, an illustrator, and perhaps most importantly for artist Alley, a toy designer. Born from humble origins in underground art shows and influenced by 1980s video games, animation, and skateboarding, he's risen to prominence thanks to his crisp, bold lines, a vibrant palette, and work that is socially conscious, reflective, and human. We're going to go ahead and start this review by first figuring out how tall the Joe Ledbetter Batman statue stands. Now, I did go way past his ears. Where are you going, asks the mob. Well, I'm actually going to the very tops of his wings. After all, that seems to be the tallest point on the statue, as good of a place as any to get its dimension. So I'm going to stop it right there. According to the tape measure, this statue to right about there stands 6.4. 6.4 inches in height, which in centimeters works out to be Muchachos 16.3, 16.3 centimeters tall. Having a look at the statue, I have to say it caught me by surprise. DC Artist Alley, of course, over the years, DC Collectibles have spotlighted different various artists through different mediums that they're known for and produce some of their works here in plastic form and statues and figures. But Joe Ledbetter, of all things, was the one that kind of caught me by surprise because I had already known of his work leading up to this by some of the stuff that Kid Robot was releasing. I've done a review of the Joe Ledbetter vinyl figures and uh, already quite familiar with his work. Kind of that it's very bold cartoon style that only Joe Ledbetter is known for. So finding out, of course, that DC Collectibles was going to be doing uh, like a subline for the DC Artist Allery spo spotlighting some of his works, I was really, really excited. And the end result is, now physically seeing it in hand, it delivers exactly what I would want this to deliver, a slightly more cartoon rendition of Batman. And I really do think it looks quite good, very vibrant. And one of my takeaways, my immediate takeaways from this statue is the fact that it has the, those trademark Joe Ledbetter bold lines, something that he's really, really known for. Now, this particular statue sort of sits on a tail or sits on the back, if you will, of the of the wings. On the back as well, you'll also see his trademark signature, J. Led, as well as on the side, it'll tell you out of 3,000 copies just how what number this is. DC Collectibles had provided this one for this review, so you'll see that it's an artist proof out of 17. Normally, though, you would have the sequenced number spotlighted out of 3,000, and it would be indicated right here. Yes, through the longest time, Joe Ledbetter was doing releases for Kid Robot, his art style captured in vinyl form. And with this release for Batman, you can kind of see his signature calling card, if you will, really with some of the things that we've already discussed, such as like his cartoonier style, the bold black lines, and really that's the that's the the obvious first thing that I notice, even like looking at the statue, really except for the gray portions of it, all the blue has a bold black outlining. It's almost as if it's been drawn and then just kind of cut out from paper. You can kind of really see it here firsthand. Um, I really like the face sculpt quite a bit. 
it's not everyone's preferred choice, perhaps, for what a Batman statue should look like, but there's certainly a charm that could be taken away from the more simplified approach to Batman and some of the other characters that the Leadbetter Artist Alley statues are going to be representing. There's a Catwoman and also a Penguin that we're going to be looking at in future videos. But I'm really liking the Batman here quite a bit. I love these big fangs sticking out from the parts of his mouth here, the front parts of his mouth, with sort of a grimacing on the side, which you could almost guess could take some cues maybe from the original uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, perhaps, as the art design here. Um, it's funny enough that he actually looks like he's kind of wearing bat underwear. I think that's kind of funny. And actually, except for really the gray portions of his outfit that have quite noticeable almost feathering or scaling to it, the rest of the statue actually keeps rather clean, rather smooth, and rather precise. It's simplified for the sake of being simplified. It doesn't have to be overly busy and overly complicated, which again is some of the stuff that he's known for. A lot of his signature is bold black lines, cartoonier styling here. And again, it works well here for this particular Batman. Uh, my favorite thing though by far is the face, but I love also the little elements that they've added to it, all of which being like the Bat emblem and the Bat utility belt, outlined in the bold black uh, bold black lining there. You'll see probably a consistent trend as I'm looking at these pieces. One of the obvious things, the takeaway tags for this is the fact that he uses the bold black lining. I love that. Uh, even like the wings, for example, like you'll see that these little kind of, not tear marks, but these little jagged parts at the bottoms of his wings. It's not on this side, it's only on this side. There's like an irregularity to it that I quite actually like, a little kind of Kimp, like a little clip and a little cut there on the side of the wing. Uh, the fingers have been outlined as well in that same trademark signature of the panel lining there. And again, like the coloring really on this is quite vibrant. Uh, part of me would have loved to have propped the statue up actually on Batman's legs. It's not really something that could be accomplished. Instead, rather, the statue is supposed to sit on that little curved par part on the back of its wings. That's how it props itself up, and a great way to really display itself on the shelf. As I said, though, for the DC Artist Alley, where there's technically, I think, four statues slated under the Joe Ledbetter line. It's going to be Batman, it's going to be Catwoman, it's going to be Penguin, and I believe Robin makes up the quartet. A good starting point here would be looking at the Cape Crusader, and we're going to look at the rest of the Joe Ledbetter uh, statues in future reviews. But really, if you are a fan of Joe's design, his styling, this really does encompass a lot of that and packs it very nicely under a DC character. This one, of course, being Batman here. One thing I really like about the DC Collectibles, DC Artist Alley is that they do spotlight artists. It's an opportunity for artists to showcase their fares to new collectors that maybe aren't familiar with their works. Some are a little bit more successful than others, and Honestly speaking, maybe this isn't your cup of tea. Maybe you look at the stylized, kind of cartoonier look of Batman, and you just don't think it's your thing. And that's perfectly fine. What I would say, though, is if you do get a chance, go and search out Joe Ledbetter's work online. Maybe check out some of the reviews that I've done for the Kid Robot releases from Joe Ledbetter, and you might actually be swayed to liking this statue a little bit more than when you started with before. Like I said, there are four slated releases for the Joe Ledbetter Artist Alley lineup. There's the Batman, there's the Penguin, there's the Catwoman, and there is the Robin. I'm going to do my best to try to have a look at all of them to showcase some of the really cool artwork that Joe Ledbetter is known for. Again, I understand this may not be everyone's thing, this design of Batman, but do give it a chance because the unfortunate end of the Artist Alley is that they're always in limited quantities. This particular Batman was limited to 3,000 copies, which does seem high, until it sells out and then they're next to impossible to find. I know this for a fact from personal experiences because we just had a look at the Harley Quinn uh, on this on this channel. It was the show Marassi Harley Quinn and I really wanted to get the standard release and I missed my chance. Finding it online and checking it certainly in most local retail and comic book stores, it's impossible to find. So, like I said, check out some of Joe's work online. If you do like his work, I most definitely would encourage you guys to pick this one up because it's just a really neat designed Batman and something very different than what we normally would see for the Cape Crusader. Today, like I said, we were having a look at the new DC Collectibles DC Artist Alley. This was the Joe Ledbetter uh, Batman. A, a figure one of a four figure set for statue set. If you guys also want to go back and have a look at some of my other DC Artist Alley reviews, there's a whole playlist for that. 
And if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below as certainly more videos, perhaps just like this, will be coming soon. So stay tuned for those. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys next time.